This is Big Podcast. It's the marketing podcast for podcasters. Build a big podcast. My name is David Hooper. Bigpodcast.com. That's the website. This is the audio edition of my weekly newsletter called Big Podcast Insider. That goes out every Friday morning, New York City time. This is issue number 175. And if you're interested in reading along, it is at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. All of the links and also more information about everything that I'm talking about, you'll find it all at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. In this episode, it costs a lot of money to look this cheap. Death of a follower and the future of building an audience online. How to make podcasts that spread. You versus world leaders. Lizzo. She quit. And now she's back. Maybe. Can you relate to this? Also some classified ads, things that I think will help you to grow your podcast audience. Build a bigger podcast. Make money, make impact. This episode is brought to you by Riverside.fm, a virtual studio that makes recording and editing at the highest quality possible, accessible to anyone. It used to cost so much money to get good quality tape. It used to cost so much money to send somebody with a microphone and a recorder to someone's physical location, hold a microphone up to their mouth and a telephone up to their ear, and do what we call a double ender. You know, a lot of people still work like that. NPR sent somebody to my house with a microphone and a telephone, and that's how we did the interview. But you don't have to do that, not with Riverside. Riverside works through the internet, recording you and your guests locally, bypassing poor and unstable internet connections, and giving you studio quality audio and video. You're going to sound like you're in the same room. Studio quality recordings, lightning fast editing, instant transcriptions via AI with 99% accuracy. Everything you put through Riverside, you can automatically transcribe and caption your recordings in seconds with their AI-powered technology. It's accurate, reliable, and it supports more than 100 languages. You want to try it? Here's how to do it for free. Riverside.fm. They're going to give you a couple of hours. Check it out. Look under the hood. Kick the tires. Take it for a test drive. See how you like it. If you want to continue with it, and you will. This is a discount code. Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's Riverside.fm, the discount code to get you 15% off for life. Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. All right, let's do this. I'm going from thing to thing to thing. You heard me mention each of these at the front of the episode. All of them are about podcasting, and thanks to the smoothing power of a nice edit, you may not know that I switch, so I'm going to play this sound for you. That's how you know. If you want more information, go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 175. Let's go. Costs a lot of money to look this cheap. You know who said that? My hero, the woman who makes me proud to be from Tennessee, Dolly Parton said it. If you want to play the game, you've got to invest in yourself. That's the bottom line. Fortunately for podcasters, it really doesn't cost that much to sound great. I just talked about Riverside.fm. So much easier than it used to be. If you just need something for yourself, Audacity, that is free. But you need a good mic and you need a good interface. Right now, Focusrite, they've got a $100 podcast studio. I've been telling everybody about this. I can't believe it. Focusrite is what I use. The interface that I'm using right this instant is the Focusrite Scarlet 4i4. On my office computer, I use the Focusrite Vocaster 1. And for just $100, it's actually $99, but who's counting? Under $100, let's say that. (laughs) You get the Focusrite Vocaster 1. You get a microphone, very similar to the Shure SM5758. It's an amazing mic. I've been using it all week. It sounds great. You get studio headphones. You get the cables. Again, 99 bucks. It's perfect for you if you're doing a solo podcast or if you're interviewing people remotely using something like Riverside.fm. This is everything that you need. You order from Amazon, and I've got a link, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This will get it for you. You know, free shipping. If you're looking to upgrade your setup, you've got maybe a headset mic. People think you work at McDonald's. (laughs) <laughs> you're looking for a real studio this is it and you get it for under 100 bucks the other thing I like about it is it can grow with you the interface the Focusrite Vocaster is perfect for streaming let me tell you a story about Focusrite and this is with the Scarlet series the 2i2 I was doing an interview with Dave Jr. from Megadeth Lightning 100 welcomes Megadeth <laughs> 
Just kidding. It's David Hooper from Music Business Radio. We're recording a special episode with a live studio audience featuring Dave Ellison of Megadeth. August 10th as part of the Rock and Pot Expo, and you're invited to attend as our guest. Afterwards, join Dave Ellison for a special presentation on how to build a music business career. You can be our guest. We have a limited amount of tickets, and to get on the list, sign up at lightning100.com slash ticket window. And I'll see you April 10th at Rock and Pot Expo with Dave Ellison of Megadeth. It was live. We are super excited about doing it. Bunch of radio promo, live audience, probably 100 people there. There's this big PA, a complicated system. And for whatever reason, it wasn't interfacing with my engineer's equipment. She says, hang on. Reaches in her backpack, pulls out the Scarlet 2i2. Very similar to the Focusrite Vocaster that I'm talking about. Very inexpensive, but it sounds great. She saves the day. I don't know what we would have done without that. We've got all these people there. Obviously, I want to get the interview so I can say, yeah, interview the guy with Megadeth. And people say, no, you didn't. And I say, yeah, I did. Taper, it didn't happen. I'm like, uh, uh, I got the proof. (laughs) Thanks to a Focusrite interface. I love this stuff. It's one of my favorite companies. There are three equipment companies that I love for podcasting. I'm using all three of them right now. The mic I'm using, the RE20 by Electro Voice. I love Electro Voice stuff. The backup recorder, Zoom, I'm using the Zoom F3. It's a field recorder, 32-bit float, super simple, backs up everything that I do. And I love Focusrite for my interfaces. You owe it to yourself to check out this deal, whether you want an interface for yourself or you're looking for a situation where you have to send somebody a mic and send somebody an interface. It's inexpensive. Buy two or three of them. Have them crisscrossing the country as you are doing your interviews. That way you can get something to the person on time, have the next one going to the next guy, the next one going to the next guy. You're never going to be behind because somebody is late getting to the post office to send that mic off to the next person. This really is a great deal. I've got everything linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Death of a follower and the future of building an audience online. Jack Conti, he's the founder of Patreon. And he's got a presentation. I've got it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com about creative work online and building true fans. This is worth a look. Let me give you some of the highlights. He talks about the evolution of the internet from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0, highlighting the significance of platforms like YouTube that allowed creators to easily share their work. A lot of podcasters are like, YouTube, that's not a podcast. Okay, right. It's not. Or it is. Who cares? But YouTube has allowed us to put our stuff online, whether it's a video of our podcast or just an audio recording, and make it accessible to anyone. Your mother, your grandmother, they all know YouTube. Kids, they all know YouTube. What they don't know always is how to get your podcast. Throw it up on YouTube. Anyway, Jack Conti's talking about that. He talks about the importance of followers, especially true fans in a creator's journey. And you know this. you got those guys that are listening to your podcast. Like, man, great episode. <laughs> I got a buddy of mine. <laughs> it's a dude I met at the gym. Every Monday morning, I get a text. Listen to me on the radio Sunday night. Oh man, great episode last night. He loves it. Loves it. I need more fans like him. (laughs) Jack talks about the shift of algorithmic ranking on social media platforms like Facebook and how it's affected our ability to connect with our audiences. How has it affected us? Well, this is how it's affected us. We are at the mercy of Facebook and algorithms. So a lot of times you're having people, they play to that algorithm. It's not necessarily what people want. It's what's good for the algorithm. And the downside of this is we got some lowbrow content. I'm not being judgmental. I'm just going to say it's like seven tips for this. You're never going to believe number six. It's that kind of stuff. It's not necessarily maybe as helpful as it could be otherwise. But, you know, this is the society we live in. And there's a lot of noise on the Internet, a lot of noise on YouTube. That kind of stuff cuts through. He talks about the emergency of platforms like TikTok and their impact on the creative ecosystem which has led to a decline in organic reach for creators. He talks about Patreon's response to these challenges, focusing on building deeper connections between creators, that's you, and your true fans. He talks about Patreon's vision to become a true fan company, emphasizing the importance of building a better internet for creators, where they have control over their businesses and careers. I think it's going to give you a lot to think about. I'm seeing more and more podcasters try to play that YouTube game. Seven tips for this. You're never going to believe number six. If that's what you want to do, fine. 
What I'm also seeing is guys that have been in the YouTube game for a while. It feels shallow. And what they're finding is, yeah, they've got a lot of attention. And yes, they've got a lot of clicks, maybe followers, subscribers. But what they don't really have is anybody who's going to miss them when they're gone. Is anybody who's going to follow them over to do something else that's going to allow them to have money for themselves and provide for their families. It's a predicament. While YouTube has made it so we can put something online and have it accessible from anywhere by anyone, what it has also done, because we're all playing to the algorithm, is it has made it almost like broadcast media. Get on YouTube, they tell you what to consume. In the long term, that is not going to work for most people because you have not gamed the algorithm as good as these big companies that are coming in. If you were to go on YouTube 10, 15 years ago, it was independent creators, and some of those guys are still around, but a lot of them have fallen by the wayside, dead bodies on the side of the road, and you've got these bigger companies that are coming in, big, big companies, big media companies, same guys we see on cable and broadcast. They're playing the YouTube game. They've got many more resources than you do. They've got more money than you do, more people than you do, more knowledge than you do, more equipment than you do, more content, more videos. You'll see guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, oh, just put out 400 contents a day. How? And even if you could do it, is it any good? And speaking of Gary Vaynerchuk, he's not always on top. And he's kind of stressed out. This is a judgment. He looks like he's stressed out. <laughs> looks like he's tired. Always chasing something and having to be more extreme. The biggest, the best, the next big thing. A lot of it involves money making, kind of a low hanging fruit. Selling a remedy for pain. If you're not doing that, your content isn't going to play as well, even if you do do 400 pieces of content per day. Anyway, this is a very interesting presentation. Even if you don't use Patreon, I want you to think about what Jack Conti is saying, because this is about relationships with fans. This is you connecting to your listeners. You don't need a huge audience to do this, by the way. You just need the right audience. More thoughts on this, link to the video, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. How to make podcasts that spread. I'm going to hijack this idea. The original article is called How to Write Articles That Spread. I've got that linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This applies to your podcast. I think it's a great way to think about why some podcast episodes take off and others don't. It goes back to that 400 pieces of content per day. The reason we know about Gary Vaynerchuk is because he's bombarding the internet with stuff. I don't think the dude's necessarily a genius. I think it's a volume play. If you put out 400 pieces of content a day, one of those things occasionally is going to take off. You may know this if you've been listening for a while. My background is in the music industry. Let me tell you how the music industry works. One out of every eight albums makes money. And this is most creative industries, by the way. This is film, this is TV, this is books. The one out of eight that makes money makes enough to cover the seven losses. It's not unlike these VC guys who are investing money in companies. They know some of those companies aren't going to work. But the ones that do, when you get them, boom, you're making a ton of money. Check out this concept from this article. He calls it thrust and drag. The thrust of an episode is what motivates someone to invest the energy necessary to listen, understand what's being said, and share with others. Drag, that's everything that makes listening harder, such as bad or missing episode notes, off-topic intros, or even little things, sloppy editing. A lot of people are editing with text, like editing a Word document, but it's audio, and it chops things off. For example, instead of podcasts, something with an S, it comes out as podcast. Chops the S's off. Chops a lot of things off. That is drag. That is taking the listener out of listening to you and being in the moment with you and forgetting that he's listening to a performance and making the fact that it's a performance very obvious. What you want is episodes that have more thrust than drag. When you have that, your episodes are consumed. To boost the thrust of your podcast episodes and ensure they resonate with your audience, 
Here are some things to implement. One, identify and promote unique insights. Each episode that you do should offer a new or unique perspective that listeners can't find elsewhere. Highlight these insights early to hook the listener. If you go back to the very beginning of this episode, I say, here's what we're talking about. One, two, three, four, five. I list the articles. That's to get you hooked in. I'm going to continue to listen to this because I want to hear about Lizzo. Do you? That's coming up. (laughs) You need to leverage engaging storytelling. Use compelling narratives to convey your message. Stories are memorable and can help your content stand out. The Bible. What is it? Stories, man. Stories. Parables. It's not a procedure manual. It's stories. That's why it gets passed around. You need to focus on guest selection and diversity. Invite guests with engaging personalities or those who are thought leaders in their field. A diverse range of voices can cater to a wider audience. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see podcasters make. Getting the same guest as the next guy. And this is true for live events as well. There are a few podcasting conferences, for example, and I'm using this because you're in the podcasting space, you may be aware of these. If you look at them from year to year, a lot of times it's the same people. And I get it. I get it. Some people have a draw. Some people are very likable. But eventually that stuff works against you. Oh, I've seen that guy. Don't need to see him. I've already seen him. And it's him, 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 by the way. Where are the women? Where's that diversity that's going to bring other people in that might not connect to these dudes? You got to think about this with your podcast. Guest differentiation, guest diversity. You might think you've got it, do an audit. I'm aware of this stuff. I think about this all the time. I went back and looked at the audit. I was like, whoa, whoa. Got to do some work, man. Got to do some work because we hang out with people that are just like us. Think about your neighborhood. Make the same money as you do. They probably look like you. Same school, same church, same food. We hang out with people that are just like us and our podcasts are often that way. If you want to make an impact in the podcasting space, bring different people in, different voices, different opinions. Have conversations around things. It's not going to work for everybody. Some people want the same thing. But it's going to work for more people than it doesn't. The other thing, interactive content. Encourage listener participation through Q&A sessions, polls, or incorporating listener feedback into episodes. This builds a community around your podcast. Do you have a way for people to reach you? Google Voice? Something where they can press a button on your website, leave a voice message? Might be worth doing. It lets listeners know that they're not alone. It also lets listeners know they're in the right place when another listener calls in and they say, hey, I've got a question about this, or hey, I had this experience and this is what happened. There's something called twinning. We do this when we're looking at product reviews. For example, Yelp, Amazon. Let's say I want to buy a new microphone. I go to Amazon. I look at the reviews. If I see a review that says, hey, I'm a 50-something-year-old podcaster. I record in a 5 by 8 closet in my house. I've got a Focusrite interface. I was looking for a great mic to work with this interface. I bought this one, and it is amazing. It's so good with my voice. It really worked for me. Here's a sample. That's going to get my attention. I'm going to listen to it. Hey, that guy's voice even sounds like me. I'm going to get that thing. Twinning. Here's how you can reduce drag. This will make your podcast more accessible and enjoyable. Consider these options. Improve audio quality. Speaking of mics, invest in a good microphone and editing software to enhance the listener experience. Clear audio is fundamental. That's why I talk about this $100 studio from Focusrite. If you're not using a baseline studio like that, are you really a podcaster? A hundred bucks, man. You're going to speak your message. You might as well speak it into a good mic. Clear audio is fundamental. Also streamline your episode structure. Keep introductions brief and on topic and ensure the episode flows logically. Well-structured episode keeps listeners engaged. This episode, I tell you what's coming. I tell you how it works. There's that demarcation point. I tell you to go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com. You hear the demarcation sound. We go to the next thing. It is very structured. Do you have a similar structure for your podcast? Quick intro, guest interview, out. It doesn't have to be complicated. That's the whole point. You don't want it to be complicated. Sometimes I'll listen to a podcast, a co-hosted podcast, for example, and people know each other. Oh, hey, man, what have you been doing since the last episode? Like they hadn't even planned anything. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, Billy started kindergarten? Oh, my gosh, Billy's getting so big. Nobody cares. 
Nobody cares. You can say that in a sentence. Yeah, it's been a busy week. Billy started kindergarten. Excited to get back in the saddle with you. Done. You let them know you've got a kid in kindergarten. It gives people a taste for twinning. Oh, I'll get a kindergarten too. And then you get to the point. Here's the other thing. Enhanced show notes and accessibility features. I call these episode notes. They are detailed notes with timestamps, summaries, and links that will make your podcast more accessible and useful to your audience. This is so, so easy. There are a lot of AI tools that will do this now. You've got no excuse not to have a basic episode note that somebody can look up, that's going to work for search, that's going to get people in the right place, or let them know, nope, this isn't the right place. Move on. Also, regular editing. Right now, I'm at the 3122 mark. Big Podcast Supercomputer. Give me the time check. This is the Big Podcast Supercomputer with a courtesy time check. The current time is 20 minutes and 42 seconds. Approximately 10 minutes of the raw tape from this episode has already been removed. A lot gets cut. And this is especially important with a co-host of podcasts like I'm talking about. Fine, fine. Have your chat, catch up, but then get to the meat. Cut all that other stuff out. People want the meat. Remove unnecessary tangents, long pauses, or any element that doesn't add value to the episode. Tight editing keeps the content focused and it respects your listener's time. If you apply these strategies, you can significantly increase the likelihood of your podcast episode being listened to, enjoyed, and shared by people. You probably heard me use this example. If you were a comic and you can tell the same joke in 30 seconds that the next guy can tell in 60 seconds or 90 seconds, people think you're funnier. I love this stuff. Coming from music, 3.30 song. We don't want 14-minute songs. We want a 3.30 song. And nowadays, songs, two minutes. They're really getting to the point. Just get to the hook. Get to the chorus. Don't bore us. <laughs> That's what we say. You want to do the same thing with your podcast. If you want to go deeper, I've got the article at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 175. It is worth reading. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. You versus world leaders. Kim Jong-un. Why does he have seven mics on his lectern? Seven. Remember back in the day, you look at a U.S. president, Reagan, Carter, Nixon, 50 mics. <laughs> we don't see that these days, but even if you look at the current president, Joe Biden, he's going to have a couple mics up there. Sure, SM57s, by the way. And the reason he has that is because if one of them goes out, and you know this is a podcaster, they do. You want backup. You can't have a president giving an important speech, trying to get the world's attention. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Mike, Mike went out, Mike went out. What are we going to do? No, can't do that. It used to be, by the way, I talked about Reagan, Nixon, Carter, different news agencies had their own feed, their own recording. But most of the time these days, it is for redundancy. You do not want a mic to fail during an important moment. I talked about the Zoom F3 that I've got here. That's my backup recorder. I'm recording directly into a Mac. The reason I've got it is because I've got redundancy, especially with an interview or a co-hosted session. If somebody else says something, you could have that person repeat it, but you're not going to get that moment back. You're not going to get the inflection, the pauses, the laughter, the tension. Redundancy. So what do you have in common with world leaders or should you have in common with world leaders? Redundancy. By the way, I'm curious about the equipment that you've got but aren't using. I want to know why you bought it, why you aren't using it, and what you do with the equipment that you no longer use. You can reach out to me via Mastodon, Blue Sky, or Threads. Let me know. You can find the links and a funny image regarding this at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 175 newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Lizzo quits. Can you relate? I don't have the details on what's happening with Lizzo. And if you don't know who Lizzo is or what's going on, this really could be anybody. This could be a YouTuber. This could be a famous actor. Dave Chappelle disappeared for a while several years ago. Hanging out on the farm. He just got burnt out. And it happens with podcasters as well. This is why I'm bringing this up. Anyway, about Lizzo specifically, I do not have the details regarding this Lizzo lawsuit. So I don't want to pick a side with Lizzo and say, oh man, Lizzo's the best or Lizzo's the worst. I don't know. 
I don't know, but I'm mentioning this here because Lizzo came out a couple weeks ago and she said, I quit. I'm sick of this. I'm out of here. Now, since then, she's back. She's explained herself. But I think the reason this happened is because there's a lot of pressure with being a public figure who releases content for public consumption. We are opening ourselves up for criticism every single time. And you also open yourself up to misinterpretation of what you create. You don't have to have the status of Lizzo or Chappelle or any of these big YouTubers to experience the difficulty of being a public figure. We walk a razor's edge, and no matter what we do, we're going to make somebody mad. One of the things I love about working with podcasters is that podcasters care deeply. And one of the things about caring deeply is that podcasters will often keep creating episodes at the expense of themselves. Now, this is about the third music business example I've given on this podcast, but I used to see this happen all the time in the music business. People talk about the curse of 27. Why do so many musicians die at 27? Well, rock and roll, pop music, it is a young man's game. And you have a lot of people that just haven't developed a sense of self or a sense of boundaries that are told to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going because there's money on the table or there's fame, or they're chasing something, and then it catches up to them about 27. That's the reason for that. I don't want to see that thing happen to you. Do not keep going for listeners at the expense of yourself. I want you to take care of yourself. If you need to take a break, do that. That's what's going to allow you to keep going. I've got more thoughts on this. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Classified ads for you. Swell AI automates writing podcast summaries, articles, social posts, and more. I was just talking about this, how important episode notes are. Swell AI is going to make this so easy for you. You can manage multiple shows in one dashboard, build custom templates with each show. It connects to Google Drive, Dropbox, and Zoom. You can get started for free. I've got a link for you at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. The $100 podcast studio from Focusrite. So nice, had to mention it twice. This is a complete podcasting studio for only $100. It includes the Vocaster One audio interface, the Vocaster DM1 mic, the Focusrite HP 60V studio headphones, and an XLR mic and interface cable. It is perfect for a solo podcaster or somebody doing only remote interviews. If you've got two people in the same room, there's a $200 version of this. It's got the Vocaster DM 14V mic, studio headphones, and also all the cables that you need. I've got a review of it. It is linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is a great deal. You're going to hear me plugging it all month, man. If the sound on your podcast isn't where you want it to be, get this. Get this. It's got some nice settings, a nice radio settings. It's going to make your voice sound so good, so good. The Vocaster software is great. It's got something called Auto Gain. Set it and forget it, man. It's automated. It is very cool. And right now, under $100, I've got everything linked. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Hey, when you're ready, here's how I can help you even more. If you want a shortcut to building a podcast that people care about, this is what I've got for you free of charge. Big Podcast Extra, short emails to help you build an audience, attract clients, and make money via podcasting. Again, that is free. Also free for you, you can download this right now, the Podcast Growth Toolkit. I call this the Swiss Army Knife of podcasting. Everything you need to make compelling episodes, compelling episode titles, all the legal forms you need guests to sign off on or music that you're going to use, they are in there. It's the Swiss Army Knife of podcasting. I call it the Podcast Growth Toolkit. These two things available for free at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you've got a little money, AMP, the audio monetization program. This is personalized coaching for indie podcasters to help you grow your podcast audience and build your authority, brand, and reputation. I love working with independent podcasters. I want to help you spread a message. I want to help you change the world. I want to help you make money. Feel what it's like to make money doing something you love, something that's helping people. And as a result of that, be able to take care of yourself and your family. It's cheap, just a few hundred dollars per year. This is the URL for it. Bigpodcast.com slash AMP, A-M-P. Now, it's a long letter because I want you to make a good decision if you jump in here with me. I want to give you all the information up front, let you know what you're getting into. It's bigpodcast.com slash AMP. Go there and check it out. While you're on the bigpodcast.com site, do subscribe to this podcast. Every week I'm here, sometimes a couple times a week. Everything that I do, the same kind of thing. Help you grow an audience build a bigger podcast, make a podcast that matters, make a podcast that makes impact, make a podcast that makes you money. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe will make sure that you never miss an episode. I have three buttons, one for Android, one for iPhone, one with an RSS feed. You old school like that? Yeah, I see you. 
an RSS feed. I got it at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've even got a QR code. You can scan it through the magic of QR. What is that anyway? I don't know, but I know what it does. You scan it. You get this podcast via your phone. You can listen to me in the car, in the gym. Some people listen to church. I don't judge. I hope you spread that message. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That's how to get it. Go there now and subscribe before you forget. And I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.